Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you how to do a carburetor rejet on an XP250. This will also be a review of the Six Sigma jet kit. I'll show you how to remove the seat, the fuel pump, just a couple of hoses, then we'll take the tank itself off to get a better view of the carburetor. Then we'll change out some jets and remove the slide to shim the needle. Alright, here we are with the Six Sigma jet kit. Uh, I bought this because it seems to be what most people are using uh, with the XV250 on YouTube and other places around the internet. Uh, so I wanted to see for myself what's included and uh, I already don't recommend it and I'll give you some alternatives but we'll get into that uh, as we get further on. So opening it up we've got a bag of parts, a sticker, and some instructions. I've gone through these instructions and uh, the first couple of pages are generic carburetor cleaning instructions and then after that it's generic instructions for installing a jet kit but the pictures provided are not specific to our bike so it's mostly useless here's the main page of instructions I'm going to dig into these parts lay them out and we'll talk about what they want us to do with it okay so I have all the parts laid out that they provided uh, right next to the instructions that they go to so to start off they want us to shim up our uh, slide needle with two of the metal shims included here. After that we need to change our jets. Um, here's the jets that are included. We've got uh, one idle jet. This is a 20. The stock size is 17.5. Then we have three choices of main jet. 115, 120, and 125. Stock is of course 110. So good choice of uh, jets here and these do have Mikuni markings on them so they are genuine parts. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, it's got two drill bits here. This is a 5.30 seconds drill bit, and this one is intended to uh, help you drill out the brass cap that's covering your air mixture screw. On the right side of your bike, below the slide, this center right here is going to have a cap on it. And that cap is going to have a tiny little pinhole. You're going to drill this pinhole out a little more and then thread the wood screw into it, and then with some pliers that should allow you to yank the cap out. And then you have access to your air mixture screw. Now this second drill bit is where you get into the weird part of this kit. Uh, this is suggesting that you drill an additional hole in the slide, in the bottom of your slide, and then uh, additionally clip two coils off of the spring that is uh, pressing the slide back down in the carburetor. That seems like messing with a delicately designed system, and uh, it seems like a can of worms that I don't want to open, even though I do have spare parts. Uh, I'd just rather not deal with that. Um, so, we're going to get into this install. So head on out to the bike with your jets and tools, and we'll go ahead and get started. First step is going to be to remove your seat. There's going to be two 10 millimeter bolts, one on each side. Remove those and the seat should just lift off. After that, go ahead and loosen that 12 millimeter bolt that holds your gas tank on. Then we'll get our fuel pump off, it's two 8 millimeter bolts. Just leave that hanging for now. Then on the other side, you're going to want to make sure your pet cock is set to regular or reserve. Prime is going to end up with a bunch of gas everywhere, so regular or reserve, you should be fine. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and remove this one hose. There's going to be a little bit of gas in it, so have a bottle ready to catch it. On the other side, we'll just pull that hose through. And then there's one more hose on the top left of your pet cock. That's going to be a vacuum feed. Just go ahead and pull that off. And now we can take the tank off. Just pull up on the back and slide it. And then go ahead and set it somewhere safe. You can see I just set mine down here on my bike cover. Now you can see our carburetor a little better. On the right side of the bike you'll see the slide as well as your idle set screw. And on the left side of the bike you'll see the float bowl which is where most of the work is going to be. Alright, here's what we're going to need to look at. First you're going to want to drain your float bowl which is going to be this screw right here. 
Then there's going to be four Phillips head screws, one in each corner. On the left side, you're going to have your idle set RPM screw. That's going to come off on this bracket, so just keep track of that. Then the float bowl is going to lift up. That's going to expose your jets. Right here in the middle, that's the main jet, and to the left of it is the pilot jet. Now I'll show you on the bike itself. See that there's the drain for your float bowl. Just take a number two Phillips, crack that loose, and you'll see a couple of drops of gas start coming out. Just get it loose right now. And I'm taking the hose off of my gas tank. I'm going to put it on the uh, nozzle on the bottom and loosen the screw all the way out. We'll start draining all the gas out. Now if you decide not to do that, that's how much gasoline is going to be over your driveway. So definitely recommend you do that. Go ahead and tighten that screw back so you don't forget. Alright, let's we'll just go ahead and take this vent hose off. And we'll get started on these four screws. So I have that ratchet with my number two Phillips socket on it. And what that allows me to do is put a whole lot of pressure down on that screw. And then give it direct rotational force and it just cracks loose. Then we'll go ahead and zip the rest of these screws off. Now I'm taking off that last screw and the float bolt should just drop down. I'm checking out my seal and making sure it stayed in place and everything looks good. Zooming in on this, you can see the main jet in the middle and the pilot jet to the left. Now at this point you should remove your float. It's pretty easy. You just want to poke this hinge out. It should slide out easy. And once you pull the float down, there's going to be your float seat. Make sure you don't lose that. Keep those somewhere safe. I'm going to start with removing the pilot jet. I found it was easiest to use a flathead bit that goes to a quarter inch ratchet. And just uh, unscrew it all the way. Now I wanted to show you, I tried with a regular screwdriver at first, but there's so little room I could only go in crooked and I chewed up that jet pretty bad until I went and found those bits, so definitely recommend you use those if you have them. And just uh, reinstall it with the new jet. Now we can go ahead and loosen up our main jet. It's the one right in the middle, it's pretty easy to get at with a screwdriver. This can come out one of two ways. It can either come out just like this, where just the jet comes loose, in that case, you'll just take it out and uh, reinstall the new jet. If you're like me though, it'll come out all as one piece with this little pipe. In that case, you'll want to make sure you keep track of this little washer. You see right by my thumb there's a copper washer. That can either stay with the carb body or fall free, but just make sure you keep track of it. If it comes out like this, you'll need to take an 8mm wrench and hold that pipe steady while you loosen it with a screwdriver. Put your new jet in. Then reinstall it with that washer, slide the washer over the threads. Move the whole thing down and start threading it into place and tighten it up. Now make sure you reinstall your float. Get your float and the float seal, hook it on that tab, support it all with your finger as you slide it into the float seat, push it all in place, slide the pin in, and make sure the seal is still hooked on to the tab on the float. You'll see that little wire on there that means it's hooked up. 
Now we need to reinstall our float bowl. I went ahead and replaced the seal with a new one. Just press the seal all the way in the groove. Make sure everything's clean. Lift the float bowl up and hold it in place while you get a screw ready. Mine had two sizes of screws. One was long and one was short. The shorter ones went on the right since there was that bracket on the left. Place your bracket in place. Get one of the longer screws. Run those threads all the way down. Get your one last screw in. And then go ahead and get everything tight. Go ahead and reinstall that hose. And we're all done. Now we can go to the right side of the bike and start working on the slide. We'll start by removing these four screws. I'm going to leave that top left corner in place and I'll push these throttle cables aside. And then we'll remove that one last screw. There's going to be a spring behind it, so hold that cap in place. Go ahead and remove your spring. And pull the slide itself out. We'll take that inside to shim the needle. Alright, now we need to shim our needle. So it's just going to need a flathead screwdriver. Looking down into our slide, there's a little screw in there. So, just unscrew that. It's a plastic screw, so it shouldn't be very tight. And just tilt everything down. Everything should drop out. I'll show you how this all goes in. See, it all came out in one piece. You're going to have your needle, the spring, and then the little white piece on top that goes into the spring, and then your screw. So set your slide aside, and then you need to get this black ring off. I'll zoom in on it so you can see. This black plastic piece needs to come down. You can also take this clip off, but it's a lot harder. Don't press the needle down into anything hard. So I'm pushing it into the handle of my screwdriver since it's soft rubber. I take my two thumbnails and just press that piece of plastic down. And then you can see I've installed two of the metal shims. Press those in there. Make sure that this black plastic piece, there's a nub on it right there. It needs to be facing the pointy side of the needle. Go ahead and slide that back into place. Make sure it's all the way up against it. Now we're going to reassemble. Take your needle, make sure that that nub on the black piece is facing this way. Just go ahead and drop it down the center of your slide. It should kind of rest into place and then rotate it until that nub falls in the hole that's right next to the needle. So I know it's locked in, I can feel it. I like to have this assembled. The white piece should be oriented like this down into the spring. If you're lucky you can just drop it into place but uh, I have more luck with uh, tweezers. Just place it down into there. And then I'm grabbing the slot of that little screw with my tweezers. I'm just going to rest it into place. So I've just dropped it down in there. And then with my flathead screwdriver I'm going to put a little pressure down on it to overcome that spring and then gently rotate it. Alright, so I'm in the threads, and I'm just going to get it kind of snug. Alright, so I've got that snug. The spring should have a little, or the needle should have a little spring. It can move up and down about an eighth an inch. Shouldn't be able to rotate too easily, so that all checks out, and we're ready to reassemble. So back out at the bike, you want to press your slide into place. And make sure everything's lined up at the bottom. Press that diaphragm into the groove. See that little piece on the bottom should line up. You can put your spring in. You should line that spring with that nub on the cap. Hold everything in place. Slide your throttle cable in and get two screws in. I like to start at the corners. and then just screw everything into place.
And that's it. Now we're ready to reassemble the bike. So we're going to start with the gas tank. Go ahead and set it down. Those two nubs should lock in with some slots on the tank. We can press it forward and go ahead and tighten down that 12 millimeter bolt. After that, we'll slot our fuel hose back into place and press it onto the petcock. On the other side, we'll press it back into our fuel pump. Make sure you get those hose clamps back in place. That vacuum hose needs to go back onto the petcock in that top left corner. And you're going to want to set your petcock on prime. Go ahead and press your seat into place and tighten down those two 10 millimeter bolts. And we're all done. We're going to leave the fuel pump loose for now. That'll give us access to our idle adjustment screw. All right, go ahead and start the bike up. It might take a couple of cranks to get it going. Once it's started, take the petcock off of prime, set it back to regular, and let it warm up for a minute. At this point, I could already notice a big difference in how it was running. I didn't even have to put it on choke to get the bike started, and the throttle response was super tight already, even though the bike wasn't warm. Resist the urge to make too many adjustments right now. I'd leave that fuel screw right where it is, and as long as your bike is idling fine, I'd leave the idle RPM right where it is for now. Go ahead and go on a test ride, make sure you get the bike nice and hot. While you're out riding, give the bike a lot of different throttle positions. Give the bike a couple of high RPM full throttle pulls, and make sure that the throttle response off of idle is what you expect. Everything should feel nice and smooth. There was a massive difference in how the bike performed. Before I did this, I was already running a richer main jet at 115, but with the needle shimmed and the 125 main jet I put in there, this thing pulls nice and hard, it's super smooth at every RPM. Now that the bike is up to temperature, we need to adjust our idle air mixture. We'll do that by adjusting this screw on the right side of the carburetor, right below the slide. It's a small flathead screw. Turn that screw all the way in gently until it comes to a full seat. From there, turn the screw out two turns. Now turn that screw counterclockwise until the bike starts to stumble. Then, turn the screw clockwise, counting the number of turns as you go. The bike should start to run better and then eventually stumble once again. Make sure you remember how many turns this took. And finally, rotate the screw counterclockwise once again, half that many turns. The idea is to set the screw directly in the middle of the two positions where the bike stumbles. This should be your best idle mix. So for example, I had the screw all the way out where the bike was stumbling. I then turned the screw five turns in. As I do this, the bike runs better, and finally at the end of five turns starts to stumble again. From that position, I would then rotate the screw backwards two and a half turns, setting it right in the middle of the two positions. The last thing we need to do is adjust our idle RPM. Now I've noticed a lot of people adjust their RPM super low to try to get that Harley sound out of it. Yamaha actually recommends an idle RPM of about 1300 to 1400, which is much higher than you would think to set it if you're just setting it by ear. If you set this idle too low, your battery won't be charging at idle, and you probably also don't have enough oil pressure. So if you have one, use a digital tachometer to set your idle at the perfect RPM. This will keep everything much happier. If you don't have a tach, set it by ear to match mine as closely as you can. Now I want to get into why I don't recommend the Six Sigma Jet Kit. It's because of this pile of parts right here. This is a carburetor rebuild kit for the XV250 that I got on Amazon about a year ago for about $12. Now it's about $25, but even so, it comes with all these things that you're going to need to be replacing anyway once you pull the carburetor apart. You've got a float bowl seal, you've got all sorts of O-rings and screws. If you happen to strip out any of the uh, screws, here's some replacements. So it's pretty comprehensive. On top of that, it also came with this. Let me zoom in and I'll show you. This is an adjustable needle for our carburetor. It has all these notches and a little clip that you can move up and down. It does the same thing as the little metal shims, but uh, it gives you a wider range of adjustability and there's no shims to lose. 
So on Amazon right now you can get one of these for about $25. Make sure it includes that needle and you're all set. And about the only thing you're missing at that point is the jets. So the Six Sigma kit comes with a 125, a 120, and a 115 main jet, as well as this 20 idle jet. Uh, each of these jets can be found online for about $2.50 a piece. So even if you wanted all four of them, you're still only about $35 in, and you've got a whole comprehensive setup of parts that you're probably going to need anyway, and you're still cheaper than the Six Sigma kit. I hope everybody found this video helpful, and as always, thanks for watching, and ride safe.